On a dark, stormy night, a bus driver enters his vehicle, only to find it empty. However, as he gazes into the rearview mirror, a chilling smile spreads across his face as several people suddenly materialize within the previously empty bus. Among the passengers is Molly, who is seen anxiously staring at her hands visibly stained with blood. The scene then transitions to a man on a phone call navigating his way to an interview at Hardman Finance, a well-known finance company. Next, the story takes us back five years earlier as Molly Hardman arrives at her new countryside home along with her husband Leon, their daughter Katya, and their pet dog Bolt. The Hardman family's decision to move from the bustling city to the serene countryside is revealed to be driven by their financial struggles, seeking a temporary solution to overcome their difficulties. As the family steps out of the car, Leon and Katya enthusiastically embrace the new environment, eagerly taking in the sights. However, Molly's discontent with the move is evident, as she shows no interest and remains in the car. The countryside doesn't hold the same appeal for her, as she wishes to return to the familiar city life soon. Although it's a temporary measure, Molly finds it difficult to adjust and continuously voices her discontent with their new living conditions. On the contrary, her daughter and husband quickly adapt and embrace their fresh rural lifestyle. Despite her reservations, Leon and Katya try to console her, promising that their stay in the countryside is only temporary and that they'll eventually go back to the city. Shortly thereafter, the Kloppen, their next-door neighbors who had been discreetly observing from behind a nearby tree, approach the Hartman family to extend a warm greeting. The man informs them that the house has been unoccupied for 15 years. He also mentions that if they need any repairs, the neighbors are willing to help. Therefore, they collectively decide to renovate the house together, planning for a shared barbecue the following day. While Molly feels a bit uneasy, her family is moved by the kindness of the neighbors. Moreover, Molly soon becomes aware of something rather peculiar. The Kloppens appear to have an unusual fondness for pets, showering affection on their black cat and displaying a keen interest in Bolt, the Hartman family's dog. Afterward, the family enters their new house to inspect everything. Through the window, Molly notices the couple staying outside whispering to each other and refusing to leave. She then turns to her husband and daughter expressing her concern about the neighbors. However, they dismiss her concerns, claiming that she simply needs time to adjust to the new environment. Later that night, as Leon and Katya prepare to take Bolt for a walk, Molly opts to stay behind at home. Left alone, her emotions overwhelm her and she breaks down in tears. Yet she takes to heart her husband's advice, urging herself to maintain a positive outlook and try to adjust to their new life in the countryside. The following morning, the Hartman family is left surprised when they witness the entire neighborhood gathering to offer their assistance in cleaning the house and tending to the garden. Moreover, these neighbors go above and beyond by organizing a grand barbecue event to welcome the family. While Molly finds this strange and expresses her discomfort, Leon and Katya disregard her concerns. Afterward, Leon decides to taste the local beef and is pleasantly surprised by its delicious flavor. Curiously, he inquires with the villagers about the meat, but instead of giving them a direct answer, the villagers simply smile without offering any clarification, leaving Leon puzzled. Meanwhile, as everyone gathers around the table to share a meal, Molly stands aside and keenly observes the people around her. She notices the neighbor's unnaturally warm demeanor and that regardless of gender, everyone seems to excessively caress their pets. Just then, two women with pets approach to greet her before she can react. Molly informs them that she feels slightly hesitant as she requires time to adjust to her new surroundings. The neighbors also understand her situation and assure her that they're always ready to assist if necessary. Eventually, Molly gathers the courage to inquire about the pet animals. Then they explain it's a common practice in the countryside because no one ever knows when these animals might be useful. Unfortunately, this response only further perplexes Molly. Later that night, Molly confides in her husband, expressing her suspicions about the neighbor's unexpected display of help and support. She explains how she finds it unusual that they would dedicate their time and effort to assist new neighbors during a weekday when most people would be occupied with work or other responsibilities. Furthermore, Molly openly shares her unease regarding her neighbor's unsettling behavior. The constant presence of eerie smiles on their face coupled with their habit of frequently caressing their pets only intensifies her discomfort. But while Molly is unsettled by these behaviors, Leon naively dismisses it as mere goodwill, perceiving the neighbors as nice people. The following morning, Molly goes for a long run in the woods when she spots Mrs. Kloppen and the other woman she had talked to earlier at the party. 
Curiosity gets the better of her, and she secretly trails them deeper into the forest. Leading her to an unusual spot within the woods, shockingly she discovers Mrs. Cloppin placing their beloved cat on a large rock and raising a knife to strike the poor animal. This horrifying revelation startles Molly, capturing the attention of the other woman. Upon seeing this, Molly tries to retreat, but she is eventually discovered by the neighbors. They notice her panicked gaze and hastily approach her. Realizing that Molly would eventually uncover the secret of the village, they bring her back to their house and reveal the unsettling history of the village and ask her to keep it a secret. It turns out that the community was built upon the ruins of an ancient Viking town, and the rock is a sacrificial altar. In the past, pets and even humans were often sacrificed to ensure a prosperous future. Four years ago, a man's dog in the village was diagnosed with terminal illness. In desperation, the man had taken the dog to the sacrificial rock and euthanized it as a sacrifice. This decision leads the man to win a substantial amount of money in the lottery, indicating that the sacrificial rock exhibits its power. Then the entire town becomes aware of this, and the villagers continue this custom of sacrificing their own animals to be blessed with good fortune. Upon hearing this, Molly is astounded, but the neighbors also caution her that if she decides to make a sacrifice, she should proceed with caution. They then reveal that those who partake in sacrifices tend to become greedy and uncontrollable upon their return home. Later at home, Molly discovers a note left by her husband informing her that he and her daughter have gone to the city to collect their remaining belongings. Intrigued by the bizarre custom and motivated to turn her life around, Molly decides to test this belief. So she ventures into the basement to test her luck, and as expected, she stumbles upon a rat. She seizes the opportunity and takes the rat to the sacrificial stone, where she smashes it with a hammer. Driven by hope, she leaves the house and hurries to the lottery shop. There, she asks the clerk for a lottery ticket and reveals that she knows the secret of the stone. Concerned, the clerk reminds her to be careful before giving her a lottery ticket. Disappointingly, the card only rewards her with a small amount, prompting her to confront the two women once again. These women proceed to explain that to receive a larger reward, she needs to have a strong emotional bond with the sacrificed animal. They also clarify the amount of money earned from the sacrifice is proportional to the depth of the connection with the creature. Therefore, the big stake has to be something she is emotionally attached to or cared for by someone close to her, and sacrificing a rat would not yield much value. This small success fuels her greed and Molly becomes driven to attain even greater rewards. With this knowledge, Molly takes her pet dog Bolt for a walk in the woods, pretending to exercise. With hesitation, she then visits the sacrificial rock for the second time, along with Bolt, and ultimately stabs him with a knife. Overwhelmed with disbelief, she trembles in shock as she stares at what she has just done. Nevertheless, she decides to wash the blood off by the river before returning to the store to purchase a lottery ticket. Following such a gruesome act, she buys another lottery ticket, eagerly awaiting the announcement of her winnings. In the evening, Katya and Leon, unaware of the incident, come to the conclusion that the pet dog has simply run away. So they prepare to go out and search for Bolt while Molly excuses herself, saying she's not feeling well and stays at home. Left alone, Molly turns on the television to check the lottery numbers. However, luck does not favor her this time, as she narrowly misses out on the winning lottery. Just when she thinks she has finally won big, she only matches a few numbers and is simply left with a small amount. Filled with anger, Molly confronts her neighbors again to discuss the results. These neighbors then empathize that genuine love for the sacrificed pets is crucial for receiving a substantial reward. This experience leads Molly to a sudden realization that she never truly loved her dog as much as she thought. They also explain that if her daughter had made the sacrifice, she would have become a millionaire, as Katya truly loved the dog. Overwhelmed with guilt and regret, Molly decides to confide in her husband about the mysterious rock and the dark rituals. She then leads Leon to the rock and divulges the rituals performed on the rock, confessing that she killed their dog on the same sacred rock. Before Leon can react, Molly professes her love for him and unexpectedly pushes him onto the rock. 
Consumed by her desperate desire to become a millionaire, she then attempts to stab her beloved husband, almost sacrificing him for the greater offering. However, it's revealed that their daughter Katya has followed them into the woods. Just as Molly is about to kill her husband, Katya intervenes in the lethal act. Claiming that she is acting for the sake of their family, Molly lunges at her own daughter with the knife. In a surprising turn of events, Katya gains the upper hand and retaliates by smashing her mother's head with a rock. The story then shifts to the present, showing the man seen earlier walking to his interview. This man, who's a reporter, arrives at Hartman's office to conduct an in-depth interview with the young owner of Hartman Finances. We discover that seemingly innocent Katya, who is shown petting a cat, is actually the CEO of the company. The conversation takes a chilling turn, as the reporter mentions her mother being mentally unstable and her father disappearing without a trace a few years later. At last, it turns out that after the mother's death on the sacrificial rock, Katya went on to amass great wealth and became a millionaire in her own right. Eventually, she orchestrated the death of her father and sacrificed him as well. Finally, we learn that Katya has also become obsessed with fulfilling her insatiable greed, possibly at the cost of her own family. And as she gently caresses her pet cat, it becomes evident that she has no intention of stopping her malicious deeds.